morning, everyone. Welcome to Fox Chapel Presbyterian Church. We're glad you're here today to celebrate Easter. It's great to be with you. Let's stand and let's sing together. It's great to be with you this morning. Your voices sound great. Sounds beautiful up here. Let's keep singing.
worship the God who is. We worship the God who is. We worship the God who evermore will be. He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, he holds the victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in his praise. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Cause he hung up on that cross, and he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling songs away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout. the Lord is risen, you say, the Lord is risen indeed. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen. Thank you for being here for worship today. It is so good to be together to worship God on this Easter Sunday morning. We are here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead and to worship God through whom we are, are conquerors of sin and death. How good to be together this morning. You are welcome in this place, welcome by this congregation and by the open, embracing arms of God. You are welcome here. We'd like to get to know you through Connect cards. And so we ask you to find a Connect card. They're in the pockets in front of you, uh, perhaps on the tables in the back. If you're online, there's a link to a virtual Connect card. This is a way for you to say, I was in worship today and to communicate with us as your pastors. You might want to leave a prayer request, a way we could be praying with you for what's going on in your life. Or maybe you'd like information about a ministry in the church. You can indicate that as well. As much as you're 
comfortable with leaving, fill it out. Drop it in the offering plate when it comes by later in the service. We want to hear from you through those Connect cards today. If this is your first time here and you have children with you, we want you to know that this church loves children. We love children in worship as well. Uh, and we have different opportunities. There are all kinds of activities in the back. We'll have a children's message today, and, and some of the kids can go to, children, to kids' church. Uh, there's information about the comfort room and nursery care and all of that in the highlights newsletter, which you can find on these round tables. If you want to pick up a highlights newsletter and learn more about children's ministries or any of the other ministries going on in the church, go ahead and get up and grab a highlights newsletter. It's full of ways that you can connect more with God and with others through the ministries of the church. I want to highlight one of those opportunities that's coming up on Saturday, April 13th. It's called the Positive Painting Project. Uh, the Positive Painting Project was created to honor the memory of a Fox Chapel School District student, Katie Wysong, who was a talented young artist, but also struggled with anxiety and depression. And her life ended when she was a ninth grader at the high school. Katie had this amazing idea that her parents have continued to remember her, and they've made it into something called the Positive Painting Project. It's an opportunity for people in different uh, parts of the community to come together through art uh, to create positive and encouraging messages that will be posted throughout schools and community spaces. So on the morning of Saturday, April 13th, we are all invited here to the Fellowship Hall uh, to enjoy what the Positive Painting Project has to give in terms of a positive and encouraging message for our young people, as well as the opportunity to relax, to do some painting, to enjoy some quiet, uh, and to spread positivity throughout the, the community. I know that many of you know the Wysong family in the community, and even if you don't know the Wysongs or didn't know Katie, uh, I know that many of you are, are well familiar with young people who are struggling with mental health. This is an opportunity for us to come together and say we care, and we're going to do something about it. So I invite you, all ages and stages are welcome on that day in the morning, April 13th. Uh, you'll also note our sponsorship concert is April 14th. It's a Sunday afternoon free concert, Handel's Messiah, uh, one of the big events of the church uh, through the year. So you are welcome to that. We're here to worship. We're here to celebrate. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. As we worship, why don't we start with prayer? Let us pray. Holy God, we praise you for being a God of love and life. You created us to live fully and abundantly in this world and to love you and others completely. But you know and we know that we fall short, God. Help us in our self-centeredness. Help us in the, the ways that we fail to show mercy to others. Help us to be more willing to hear when others cry out for peace or justice. Help us have the courage and wisdom to respond. Make us into agents of your love and peace and abundant life in this world, God, always deeply rooted in the depths of your love for us. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Friends, God's mercy and God's love is abundant and it is for you. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you are forgiven of your sins. Glory to God for that forgiveness and mercy in our lives. We're restored to our relationships with God. Why don't we, in, in our relationships with one another, stand and share the peace of Christ with one another? Good morning, everyone. Friends, our first scripture reading for this morning comes from the Gospel of Acts. 
chapter 10, beginning in verse 34. Hear now the word of God. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify with him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This time I'd love to invite Pastor Lori and our children to come forward for a children's message. All right, everybody, come on up. All children, I ask you to come on up and join me. Oh, bring your ribbons. Wait, 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 go back, go get your ribbons. Go get your ribbons. Yeah, you can take your ribbon. There we go. All right, you get it out. Don't hold too hard. All right, there we go. Yeah, bring your ribbons. Oh, my goodness. Oh, whoo. Come on up. If you don't have a ribbon, I have a ribbon for you. Come on up. great to see you. Oh, absolutely, Nora. Yeah, if you need to go see your mom, you go back to your mom, of course. My friends, today it is Easter. It means that Christ has risen. And we say, Christ has risen indeed. Can you say that? Christ has risen indeed. And I am so excited because it is a celebration and we are not only supposed to get excited in church, but in our passage today, it says we're supposed to preach it. We're supposed to tell people all about it. And I think the way to, to do this message is it's got to be big today. It's got to be big. So I know everyone, you sat down so nicely. I appreciate that. Now, everyone stand up. Get on up. Get on up. That's right. Okay. Okay. Take your ribbons, all right? I'm going to say, Christ is risen. And then you guys are going to say, Christ is risen indeed. But I want you to be like, woo! Like, you know, and then, then we're going to end it with a big, woo! All right? So, are you guys ready? Every, turn, to, turn to it. Turn to everyone. All right? And then any children of God out there, child of God out there who wants to join us in, like, making this a celebration, join us. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Woo! Okay, let's do it one more time. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Woo! That's right. It is a miracle that Christ died and he rose again for us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you that you give us reasons to celebrate. Lord, help us to preach it out like Peter did uh, on the, the day of Pentecost. Lord, tell us or te teach us how that we can get this message everywhere that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Amen. All right. All those who are age three and up are welcome to join us down the stairs uh, for our children's time. Anyone over three can 
join us. So you are welcome to join us. Friends, now is the time in our worship service where we share our joys and also our concerns with one another and lift them up to God in prayer. So first I'll ask, what brought you joy in the previous week? And then Ellis is going to go around with the microphone. If you could speak into the microphone so that I and our people online can hear your request. Then after somebody shares a joy, I will say loving God and we'll respond with, we give you thanks. So, loving God, we give you thanks. Then I'll switch to concerns, and after everyone shares a concern, I will say, merciful God, and we'll respond with, hear our prayers. So, merciful God. Oh, great. You guys are doing so well. What brought you joy in the previous week? Nobody's had a week off from school. For example, I'm um, just having the kids home for spring break and also adult children from college and family and friends who have visited. Yes, for opportunities to gather with family and friends over this spring break, loving God, we give you thanks. I, I had the opportunity this past week to go to a Baptist revival, and I just want to uh, thank the Lord for different ways of worshiping him and um, for that opportunity. Yes. One of my favorite things about Holy Week is the opportunity to worship God in ways that maybe we don't always on Sunday morning, and we're grateful for what those expressions take place. Loving God, we give you thanks. All right, let's transition to concerns. What concerns do we need to lift up to God this morning? Our grandbaby Nathan has been sick this week and spent a night in children's. He has a virus and some asthma. So just prayers for continued recovery for him. Yes. For everyone that we know and love who is sick, who's in the hospital, who's recovering from illness, merciful God, hear our prayers. All right, I think that's everybody. Ellis, if you can take the microphone back to Jenny. <laughs> Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. God, we come before you on this exciting and joyful Easter morning. We are grateful to be your people, grateful to be able to gather together in worship. We thank you for all of the ways that you have revealed yourself to us this week as we journeyed with you to get to today. We are thankful for um, different ways of worshiping you as we um, make this journey together. Lord, we are also grateful for um, children and young adults who were off and home this week and for opportunities to spend time together. Lord, in the midst of these joys, we are still a people trying to figure out how to journey with you in the midst of all of life's challenges and uncertainties. This morning, we lift up to you all those we know and love who are sick, who are in the hospital, who are recovering from or are anticipating surgery. Lord, we pray that you would send your spirit of peace and healing to be with them. Lord, we also lift up to you all of the folks here in our congregation who are grieving the loss of loved ones, particularly on fun and exciting holidays. It can, it can be really noticeable, the people that we love who aren't here with us. We pray that as we worship today, that that would ease that loneliness just a little bit. Lord, we lift up to you our mission partner of the month, Elmarie and Scott Parker, as they are continuing to follow your call in Syria and Lebanon and the Gulf states. 
We pray that they would be able to have the resources they need to do the new work you are calling them to do in this post-pandemic world. Speaking of our Lord, our world, Lord, we know not everyone is having a wonderful Easter morning. Lord, we especially lift up to you our brothers and sisters in Baltimore, in Israel, in Palestine, and in Haiti. We pray especially for those areas of our world that are experiencing war and natural disaster and poverty. We pray that as a sign and symbol of your resurrection, these areas would receive the resources they need so that all human life can flourish. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we are going to remain seated for our offering song. And as the ushers come forward for the offering, we encourage you to give your gifts back to God.
Hallelujah. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. Oh, it's good to be with you this morning on this gorgeous, uh, this gorgeous Easter morning. Our gospel lesson uh, today comes from the 16th chapter of Mark's gospel, Mark's recounting of the Easter story. Not the most familiar one. We don't usually read this one, so it might sound a little different than what you're used to. Hear now the word of the Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. Just as you rolled away the tomb, roll away the stone from our hearts that having read your scripture and hearing it proclaimed, we might receive with joy your gift of good news today. Amen. I'm not going to say everyone has felt this, but I bet plenty of us have. The way the world and life and sometimes make you feel expendable, replaceable. Expendable, Cambridge Dictionary definition, not worth keeping or no longer useful. As in, he was deemed expendable and so was cut from the team. Uh, in, the, in the tender movie, the giant mechanical man, uh, Jenna Fisher of the office fame, uh, plays a young woman named Janice, and and her life is aimless. Uh, she's She's having trouble getting her life together. She's always in danger of falling behind on her rent. Her her family can't believe that she still works for a temp agency. And at one point in uh, the movie, George, her boss at the temp agency, calls her into his office. And he says, I don't think this is working out too well. She says, what what do you mean? He says, well, we get a lot of complaints about you. They say you're distracted and and disinterested, uh, that your your heart's not in in your work, and we need employees here at the agency who are reliable. She says, George, I I am reliable. Oh, I know you're, you're, you're reliable, he says, but you're not, you're not personable. And then he goes on to say, you know that television show, Three's Company? Janet, the roommate, she's an example of what I'm talking about. She has has so much charisma. People just want to see her again and again and again. So you're saying you want me to be more like Janet from Three's Company? 
I mean, yes, that's what I'm saying, but it's not what I'm really saying, because what I'm really saying is, you know, you're fired. That's what I'm saying. Expendable. Replaceable. Writer Robert Benson went through a similarly aimless time in his life, and the pressure grew so great that he, he began to break down to the point of asking his sister to take him and check him into a psychiatric hospital. It was Good Friday, it was his birthday, and he says that every movie made was being watched by a nurse named Norma. He writes, I was going through my second divorce, I'd lost my home and my daily life with my two young children. I was trying to make it in a job that didn't fit me very well, and all the professional dreams I'd ever had had gone down in failure, mismanagement, and bankruptcy. Sometimes life can make you feel expendable. Uh, a CEO loses his job when the company's stock price plummets, but there's someone right there ready to step in and fill his shoes. A partner walks out without saying goodbye, leaves for someone else. A gay son is told by his Christian parents not to come home this year for Easter. Immigrants work the most Deadly jobs in this country, as we saw in Baltimore this week, but they are easily replaced. A middle school boy, suddenly his, his friend group turns on him and he's kicked out, but his, his place in the group isn't empty for very long. As people age, they can feel increasingly unnecessary and, and useless, like, like a burden tucked away, expendable. Presbyterian minister and writer Frederick Beekner's father died by suicide in 1936. A few days later, they found a note scribbled in the last page of the novel Gone with the Wind, which had just been published. Give Freddie my watch. Give Jamie my pen. I love and adore you and I am no good. Expendable. Not worth keeping or no longer useful. And sometimes life can make us feel that way. Peter. Peter. He's not, did you notice, he's not at the tomb with the women that morning, and it's not a stretch to imagine where he is. He's off someplace hiding, feeling like a failure, like he's no good, like he's expendable. <laughs> oh, it used to be so different. Those, those early days in, in Galilee when they were just getting started, the enthusiasm which, with which he said yes and, and threw everything away so he could follow Christ, the hope. The possibility. And he mattered then. Jesus had even given him a new name, Peter. It meant the rock, the steady one. It was a badge of honor. And then the events of last week. They ate the Passover dinner with Jesus in that upper room, so intimate, so close. And Jesus said some things that didn't really make sense. This is my body. This is my, my blood. One of you will betray me. Peter, you will deny me three times before the cock crows twice. No, he thought, that, that can't be. He said, he said, even if I have to die with you, I will, I will never deny you. And then after prayers out in the garden, soldiers show up to take Jesus with their, their swords and they were afraid, what were they supposed to do? The soldiers with, were there with their swords and, and so they scattered. Peter stayed close, in the shadows, following along. And as Jesus was interrogated all night long, 
Peter was out in the courtyard around the fire, and there was a, a girl there, a, a servant, and she stared at him suspiciously. Weren't you one of them, the ones with Jesus of Nazareth? I don't know what you're talking about, he said. And a rooster crowed in the distance. And so she started saying to others, I know it, he was one of those, one of the ones with, with Jesus. I don't know the man, Peter said. She looked right at him, you are one of them. I am not. And at that moment, a rooster crowed for the second time, and he remembered Jesus' words. And the Bible says, he broke down and wept. And that's the last we've seen or heard of Peter, broken down, weeping. Peter's not with the women at the tomb that morning. He's nowhere to be found, off, off somewhere hiding. Maybe he's writing a note for his friends, go on without me, just forget about me, I am no good. And so the women, they go to the tomb, Mary and Mary and Salome. They've got spices in hand, and even as they're wondering who will roll the stone away for them because it's so large, they see that it's already been rolled away, and so they go in the tomb, and, and Jesus isn't there, but there is a young man in white. Presumably, he's an angel, and he speaks to them. And, and did you notice as I was reading the kind of strange thing that he says? He says, you're looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He's not here. He's been raised. And so go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you and will meet you in Galilee. And Peter. It's got to be a mistake. A typo. Darn autocorrect. And Peter? I, I mean, surely it should say Accept Peter. I mean, look, Jesus is alive. And the curtain is about to go up on Act 2. And if he were smart, he would audition a whole new cast. Kind of like Jimmy Carter in 1979 when he fired his whole cabinet and, and replaced them in his push for a second term. It's time for a leadership shakeup at the top. And no one is indispensable, not even Peter. Surely there's an understudy waiting in the wings to come on stage and, and take his place. Isn't it time for the HR department to, to advertise for an open position, wanted for immediate hire, a true leader, steady as a rock, trustworthy and loyal to the end? I mean, that's what we expect. That's the way the world works. You've messed up one too many times, my friend. But Jesus, he wants the disciples and Peter, maybe especially Peter, to know that he is going ahead of them and will meet them in Galilee where it all started and where they can have a fresh start together with him. Think of it this way. There is a surface dimension to our lives. It's, it's what we always see. Call it the way the world works. You work hard. You produce. And your worth is measured by your utility and your, your productivity. And so there's fear and, and judgment and, and threat of betrayal. In this world, you're always walking on thin ice, never know where you stand. In this world, however hard you work, you're afraid you, you didn't work hard enough. However well you do, you're afraid you, you didn't do well enough. This world, keep, world keeps reminding you, you are expendable. You are replaceable. This is a world that can toss you aside whenever it wants. That's the world that, that tossed Jesus aside. And nailed him to a cross. You're no good, some <laughs> Messiah you are. But when God raised Jesus from the dead, 
God revealed a deeper, truer world. Call it the world as God sees it. A world where no one is expendable. Where no one gets cast aside, not even by death. A world where after every hurt and failure and rejection, Jesus is there to say, meet me in Galilee. Act two is about to begin, and you've got a part in it. Imagine what good news that must have been for Peter when he heard it. And it's good news for us, too. So listen, listen carefully. Listen good, as they say, because I want to be abundantly clear. There is no understudy for you. God does not have someone waiting in the wings, ready to, to rush on to the stage of life and take your place when you can't handle it anymore and when you, you can no longer sing the high notes. God does not have a farm team, a minor league team, where God is preparing a replacement for you at life's third base when your knees wear out and your arm can't throw to first anymore. No. God is writing the next chapter right now, and God needs you in it. God needs all of us in it to, to keep making this, this truer, deeper reality, the world as God sees it, to keep making it visible so that others can see it. And who better to do that than you and I, who once thought we were no good? Sure, God could use anyone but us. Sure, God could love anyone but us. Who better to do that than those of us who are learning what resurrection means, who are learning through Christ's death-defying love, just how much we matter to God. Go, tell the disciples. I will meet them in Galilee, where we will start anew in my love. Stephen is having uh, coffee with his, his pastor. She says he looks like a movie star. He's a vice president of a Fortune 500 company, holds a statewide office, and he lives in one of the fancy lofts downtown. And she says he's still a hot mess of low self-esteem issues. All this success, and he's sure he doesn't matter. She's recently preached a sermon about God's love, and, and he wants to meet and talk about this, so they're sitting in the basement of the coffee shop, sipping their, their lukewarm cafe lattes, and he says, I wonder what my life would be like if I really believed this. What would my life be like if I weren't always scared? What would my life be like if I really believed I was totally and completely loved by God? Go, tell the disciples and Peter and Stephen. I don't know how you all feel about writing in your Bible. Some people don't like to do it. But if you're okay with it, I would suggest going home after the service and getting your Bible and turning to this verse in Mark chapter 16 and marking out the name Peter and writing in your name. Go tell the disciples and Brenda and and Christy, and Jim, and Beta, and Kate, and, and tell them. I will meet them in Galilee where we can start anew in my love. Every moment is Galilee. Right now, Jesus is ready to, to, to meet in each moment and, and assure us of his love and start afresh. Each moment is Galilee. 
And that means this one is too. Right now. Right now. The Lord is risen. Hallelujah. Amen. We give you thanks for the good news of your son Christ's resurrection from the dead, for his conquering of sin and the grave, and for his message to us that we matter more than we can ever imagine in his undying love. Oh God, we ask that you would help that good news sink deep into our souls and shape every bit of the way we live. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. It's great to worship with you today. Let's stand and sing together once more.
God so loved the world, for God so loved us, for God so loved you. And so, friends, go forth from this place to serve God and your neighbor in all that you do, confident that the risen Christ goes with you every step. And may the blessings and peace of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit keep you this day and always. Amen.